G'day, my name is Aaron, an Aussie bloke with a funny Dutch last name. 20 years ago, I had an adventure sailing to the remote Torres Strait. Now, I'm building a 22 foot catamaran to recreate that adventure and have many more. Join me as I build my boat and get sailing again. Well, so here I am on my current boat, and this is going to be the first episode on my build series on why I'm building a, about building a 22 foot uh, sailing catamaran from Richard Woods, a Richard Woods Janus design. I'm going to make some changes to that, but I'll come to that on this video or the next one. But first thing I wanted to do, I had to come out to the boat today. It's, uh, it's been really windy lately, and I haven't been out for a couple of weeks, so I wanted to check the build, run the engine, and do some jobs like that. So whilst I'm doing that, I wanted to explain what is it about this boat that I, I like and why I bought it, but also why it doesn't suit me moving forward and why I have to build a new one. And this, this video can be partly, you know, primarily aimed at my wife to explain why I'm building a boat, but uh, it's also interesting for you guys out there at home. So um, let's go do some checks on board Reverie, my Daydream 28, make a coffee, and then talk about the new boat. So let's open her up, see how she looks in there. So one of the things I do like about this boat is that the bilge is always dry when I come to check it out. Tiny little bit of water in there, but I haven't been on the boat for a couple of weeks and there's nothing in there. leave the floorboards up to let any any moisture escape but ever since I put in the solar power vent up here it's just been amazing keeping the place dry so there's Reverie and this is a boat they used to own them at Sundays called Wild Honey which is a beautiful little carvel planked uh, gaff catch 22 23 foot long 27 overall with the bow sprit and the rudder so Checks I do when I come on board, I check the bilge of course. I like to check my mooring attachment, make sure that is solid, no chafe on the line. And then the next thing I do is I start, I do my engine checks. So I look over all the belts, make sure there's no leaks, nothing's out of place. And then I'll start the engine and warm that up for a good 15 minutes or so. So let's... I like to keep, keep the key to the engine next to the seacock here. So I can't start the engine without doing that. The key goes in here. And look at my, my battery switching chart. Engine start with engine bats. So that one, that one, those two. Well, that's going to be one of the reasons why I think I'm, I'm ready for another boat is that I don't want a cantankerous old diesel inboard anymore. You know that one, it started then and it always starts first time, that's the first time it's never started straight away. So uh, that's one reason, no more diesel inboards in a 20 foot catamaran. Let's see if it starts up again all right. So with the engine checks done, I always like to check. Oh, turn that off, of course. Turn my switches off. So another check I like to do in here is to check that the auto bilge pump is working. But I can't say I don't think that's ever actually had need to work. But it does work, which is great. Panel goes back in. So up here is the four peak on Reverie and it's supposed to be classified as bunks in there but you know I don't think my kids ever want to sleep in there 
It didn't come with any real cushions. Or there's certainly no mattress. But, I mean, you can see where the bulkhead is there. That's about a metre and a half of that bulkhead. So, unless you're really short or a little person, you could sleep in there. The only full-size berth this boat has is that quarter berth there. This berth here, from here, so that join there is less than 1.8 meters, as is this berth here. So they're really just seats for when you're sitting in the boat. One thing this boat has, which the catamaran will obviously not have, is a cabin like this. Um, so I have to be aware and accept the fact that I'm not going to be able to have sitting headroom inside. Uh, well, at least not sitting headroom for a lot of people. You can certainly sit on the bunk and have sitting headroom, but not like you'd be able to sit, you know, one, two, three, four, sort of five people inside. But that's okay because one of the things, another thing I don't like about this boat is that yeah, it's, it's only eight foot wide and there's not a single bit of flat real estate on board where you can really do a lot of lounging around. You know, there's a hatch right here and everything's, but everything's here because it needs to be here. Don't get me wrong, man, this is the design. I'm happy with the way this boat was designed and how it's functioned. But for a family who want to do, you know, day sailing, catamaran is always going to be the way to go because you're not so concerned about the weather because you don't go when it's raining. And you want to be able to lay out here. This, on a catamaran, this is a big trampoline area where you're going to have some pillows and lay out and relax. So. Another, that's another thing I don't, I'm not super keen about with uh, Reverie. There's my tender. It's the sound paddleboard that I made. Those of you who follow my channel already know that um, that's what started the whole channel off, was building that sound paddleboard. So if you want the, want the plans for that, hit me up. Plans are free. It's a really easy build. Three mil plywood, a little bit of fiberglass, a little bit of epoxy, but um, also makes a great yacht tender as well. Coffee, milk, biscuits, current book I'm reading, Jesse Martin Reinhardt, notepad, and water for the brew. Oh, See, there's no real, there's no real galley down there. That's that's where you get for a galley. So there's no cooker in here anyway. So this is how I, if I want to cook anything on board the boat, I've got to bring my little um, jet boil system. I have to bring everything with me. So it's not going to be too dissimilar on the catamaran. It's still going to be, you know, roughing it on board. on the go let's stop talking about what i don't like about reverie this boat and talk about skimmer the new boat why the catamaran why do i want to build a catamaran and there's a whole bunch of reasons so i'm not going to go through them in any particular order but just as they come to me because i've been doing a lot of thinking about this uh, for quite some time uh, so number one trailability the richard woods janice design has dory or flat hulled bottoms which means that it can stand up by themselves on a flatbed trailer as if you were to, to use to, to move the car around. So you don't need any special trailer to transport it and it's demountable. There's basically 16 bolts that hold it together and with the two um, cross beams forward and aft. The mast beam is just slots into its position so there's no fixing there. It just relies upon the pressure from the shrouds and the rig to hold it in position. So it's demountable, number one. It's really easy to demount. So that means I can take it places such as the Great Barrier Reef up in far north Queensland. I could trail it over across to, you know, Exmouth and, and do you know, all the, the western side of Australia. I can take it down south. I can take it places, basically. I want to be able to um, pack my boat up and not have it on a mooring and not have to sail it somewhere. 
And yes, it'll take a day to unpack it. Or actually, it'll take a day to pack it up and then put on a trailer and then drive somewhere. But you build it into the holiday. So if you're going to go somewhere for a couple of weeks, you know that you're going to have a couple of days either side setting up and packing down. And it's definitely worth it. So number one, trailability, portability. Um, number two, sh shallow draft. I love the shallow draft. With Reverie, this thing draws a meter and a half or just over five foot, which, you know, when I brought it into my, um, my mooring, the very first mooring I had it on, it just hit every unmarked sandbar there was. I mean, I was following the charts and I was following the, the marks, but some of the marks had moved because they were just floating buoys. And I ran aground three times trying to get <laughs> into the mooring. And, you know, and this is boating. And if anyone says they haven't run aground in a boat, they haven't done it yet or they're a liar. So I remember that one, kids. Um, but shallow draft, the Janus design draws 25 centimeters. This is my leg. My leg is about 60 centimeters long. So half of my leg, that's how much water the Janus needs to float. And why is that important for me? Well, it means that it's easy to get friends and family on and off the boat. I mean, if you look over here, this is where I keep my boat, Batonga on the central coast. There's lovely beaches all around here and a lo lovely one here, some, some beach combers there setting up. But it means if I want to take people sailing, I don't need to take them out in a tender. It's really good for people that are old and young. And those who may not be physically strong enough to climb up and down from a dinghy over the railing here. Now, even, even for me, it's a challenge sometimes when there's a bit of swell, the wind's up. So having that shallow draft means I can go places where big kill boats can't, but also means I can beach it. I can go shore, I can pick people up, but I can also do my own maintenance on my hull, which brings me to point number three, ease of maintenance a catamaran with two hulls shallow draft can be beached just about anywhere you're legally allowed to do so and there's some places where there's environmental protections and you can't do it and i'm not talking about scraping any fouling here and doing those kind of jobs that needs to be done in a controlled marine you know environmental environment such as a, a marina or you know um a slip a slipway but i'm talking about just being able to beach my boat check the rudders if there's any, any damage anywhere, I can give the hull a bit of a, a, a clean with a scourer. Things that make it really impossible with a keelboat to do. You just can't do that with a keelboat without careening it. And then, I mean, who wants to do that in 2021? So, um, yes, ease of maintenance is point number three. Point number two, speed. You know, I I love, I used to have a 23 foot um, sailing camera, not too different to Janice. And it was a fun, fast boat, and I had that up in the wood Sundays, and it just used to fly. I remember one sail with some mates, and we were cruising across this um, this passage between some islands, and I had two two fists on the tiller, which was like you know a long extension tiller, and I was just bracing myself, and there was spray flying everywhere, and obviously we wanted to send it that day. We wanted to go fast. We had the you know full rig. We had someone on the sheets ready to let them fly. Should we fly a hull? Never flew a hull by the way, but it was just fast and it was fun. I went there fun sailing as well. I mean, Reverie's a great cruiser, but she's not a fast boat. I mean, she's a kill boat. She's got a lead bomb on the bottom. So fourth point about why I'm building a new boat is speed and the ability to turn that speed on and off. So basically speed is efficiency. It's about when do you want to go fast, you can go fast. If you just want to put a head sail up, you can do that too. And you'll still go reasonably quickly in the right breeze. So speed and efficiency, point number four. And the last one, I mean, there's, there's probably like, you know, a hundred reasons, but the last one is um, I just love building stuff. I love having my garage. I love building things. I love learning new skills. I, and I love sharing that experience with you guys on here on YouTube. So I think the coffee's Ooh. just about done. But yeah, I just, I love building things and um, I love using my hands and as I said, I love sharing that. So that's what I want to do. I want to build a catamaran. I want to share it with you guys. And hopefully it may you know, inspire you to build your own. It may inspire you to get sailing. It may inspire you to, to build your own boat. Maybe you might want to grab the plans um, and build the standard paddleboard. Who knows? But it's just about sharing that with the world. So that's, um, that's why I'm going to build Skimmer. I'm going to make a coffee. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to call the boat Skimmer.
Oh, that's a good strong coffee. So, why call the new boat skimmer? Well, um, let's watch me this. Bits. Some of you guys, or most of you guys, probably aren't aware, but I used to be a submariner in the Australian Navy. And as submariners, we would call the surface ships skimmers. And they would call us gazundas because they skim across on the surface. And, and we um, we would go, go on that, gazunda. Um, and so it wouldn't make sense to call a sailing boat that sits on the surface and sails on that medium a, um, a gazunda, as much as I thought that was a pretty cool name. So I called it skimmer because it, um, yeah, it's just an old Navy term we used to use. So pretty simple there. But skimmer it is. And the more I say it, the more I like it. I think it's a really... Um, it's a really easy name to say. It's a really easy name to identify with. It's, um, you know, hopefully I want to get the boat Australian registered for who knows what kind of trips um, up to, you know, PNG and, and Norwegian aids. So it needs to be Australian registered. So it needs to be a name that no one else has taken as well. And it needs to be something you can say on the radio and you can easily hear it. You're not going to call it um, anything really strange. It, it, it's hard to hear on, the, you know, the garbled sounds of a radio. So that's why... Um, I like Skimmer. I think it's a good name. Skimmer is going to be in my boat for a long time until we get to the point where we want something that has more accommodation on board and we can go you know, further offshore or you know, extended holidays as a family. But right now my kids are they are two years old, they're five years old, they're six years old, they're eight years old. So that kind of long-term offshore sailing as a family is probably quite some time away. So Skimmer it is. Tell me what you guys think of the name. Tell me if you, you think it's a good name or if you have a better name, let me know. Not that, not that I'm going to change it. I'm set on skimmer, but always, you know, boat names are such an interesting thing where, you know, everyone's got a point of view about what's a good boat name, what's a dodgy boat name. So drop it in the comments and let me know. Just whilst I'm driving back to I thought of a couple of other reasons why I'm going to build the catamaran. Um, one is I can put the mast on a tabernacle and I can drop the mast or lower the mast if you want to low bridges and the other one was I can fit it and build it in my garage my garage is about 22 sorry 24 and a half foot long so I can build a 22 foot catamaran in there just so a couple more extra reasons there but um, thanks for watching guys the next video will be all about starting the build and how I got my garage set up ready to go so um, if you haven't already please uh, subscribe and click that uh, click the bell button so you can stay up to date with the build. And if you've got any questions, you know, chuck them in the comments. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.